Hi everybody, I'm really not learning, I've been doing the same mistake as last time, doing the diagram in the wrong place, it doesn't matter. So I'm back on this side again. Let's do another detailed analysis of the impact of a quota on a market. Okay, it's unlikely we'll have to draw this diagram, but just in case it's useful, again, to be able to analyse it just like a tariff diagram. Let's get moving. Start with price. What's happened to the price as a result of this quota? You'll see it's increased. So the price has gone up from PW to PW plus Q. So an increase in price. What's happened to domestic demand? Well, because the price has gone up, domestic demand has contracted. So that's gone down initially from Q2 to now Q4. So a reduction, a contraction in domestic demand. Domestic supply has increased. Yeah, has increased. So initially it was Q1. Now, <coughs> still supplying Q1 units, but they're also supplying Q3, Q4. So to Q1 plus Q3, Q4. All right. The level of imports has been capped, so imports have fallen, that's the idea, isn't it? From Q1, Q2, initially, to just Q1, Q3, and you see that's a much smaller quantity right there. So that is the import restriction right there. Domestic producer revenue. Let's now look at some of these letters, again I put the alphabet on here. Uh, it looks complicated, it's actually not if you understand what you're doing. So, domestic producer revenue. Well, initially, they were only selling Q1 units, weren't they? Okay. And they were getting a price of PW. So, initially, their revenue was just A. Now, they're selling still Q1 units, but they're getting a higher price. So, they're getting A plus C, so that rectangle there. But also, they're getting the difference between Q3 and Q4, and again, they're getting PW plus Q. So, they're getting A plus E, that revenue from selling Q1 units over there at a higher price, but also selling at the higher price still Q3, Q4 units gives them C, H and I, so that rectangle there. So producer uh, revenue, domestic producer revenue has increased substantially. Okay, so it was previously just A, now it's A plus E plus C plus H plus I, so substantial increase in domestic producer revenue. What about foreign producer revenue? Well, before they were importing, well, not they, they were actually selling, but domestically there were imports coming in from these foreign producers of Q1, Q2, and they were coming at the price of PW. So before the quota, B, C, and D have represented the foreign producer revenue. But now, what's happened? They're only importing Q1, Q3, but they're getting a higher price of PW plus quota. So from B, C, and D to now B, F, and G. Okay, quantity times the price they're getting. Okay, so it's hard to know what's happened to revenue. We need actual figures to work that out. Okay, so we'll put a question mark. But what we can say is that it's gone from B plus C plus D to now B plus F plus G. Okay, whether that's an increase or a decrease in revenue depends on the figures on the axis here. <coughs> and in my last video, I talked about the deadweight losses. The deadweight losses are I and J, where J is a deadweight welfare loss of consumer surplus. I is a deadweight welfare loss in terms of a loss of world efficiency because domestic suppliers are producing units that they shouldn't be at a higher cost or they're less efficient. They don't have the comparative advantage and they're still supplying those units because of the artificial increase in price that comes from this quota. That's all you need, guys, for this. Okay, so again, when it comes to analysis, you've got the understanding of the diagram, the impact on P's and Q's, the effect it has on revenue, and the deadweight losses right here. You're set for an essay to do very well. Thanks for watching. See you next time with trade subsidies.